So please join me in giving a really warm welcome to the CEO of one of the largest online travel platforms in the world. She's here from China. Please, a warm welcome for Jane Sun, the CEO of Trip.com. Jane, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My first question, of course, is it's just been a few days since China's opened up. Right. You're the CEO of a travel platform. Correct. What has this meant for you? What's it been like? Yeah, we are very excited to see finally the world is opening up. Uh, from our backend data, the demand is surge uh, very quickly. Uh, domestically, our number already recovered uh, to 2019 level. Uh, outside of China, uh, for the foreign friends, they are also traveling with three digits growth. Uh, mm -hmm. The most challenging piece will be cross-border because the capacity still needs to be built. Mm -hmm. But we are hoping during the second half of the year, everything will be back to normal. Now, the travel and tourism sector is, of course, under enormous pressure to become more responsible, to become more sustainable, basically to become greener. Mm -hmm. You are part of a travel platform. Right. How is a platform, how is Trip.com responding to that pressure? Yeah, we are very committed to uh, net zero. Uh, our company promotes a concept of three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, so I think if we push it uh, to extreme cases, not traveling, that is going back to COVID. Uh, during that past three years, pretty much uh, travel was zero. And obviously, it's not going to work. But how we can bring the responsible travel uh, mm -hmm. into the ecosystem, uh, we promote the 3R concept. So when we uh, bring customers to all over the world, we want them to be a diplomat. Uh, for responsible travel. They need to reduce uh, the usage of plastic, reduce the usage of water, et cetera, and the resources. Uh, reuse, if you do have to use uh, some of the materials, we encourage them to reuse them. And recycle, if you have to uh, use it and discard it, we need to recycle them. So that is very deeply rooted uh, in our consumers' uh, behavior. And also, when we design our product, we need to make sure our customers choose the most green products uh, when mm -hmm. they make a decision. For example, we encourage our hotel partners to join us for the green travel initiatives. And we make a label uh, for the hotels who join our alliance mm -hmm. uh, so that consumers can be informed uh, to choose one hotel uh, versus another. Secondly, when they make a choice on the airlines, we also calculate the emission. Uh, so consumers also can prioritize their choices by selecting uh, the airplane uh, that emits the least uh, carbons. And thirdly, we promote public transportation. For example, when we travel into London, instead of calling taxi, uh, we can use public transportation by using subways, using train uh, to travel around the continent. And lastly, uh, we also promote long stay or uh, group meetings. Meetings like this mm -hmm. really save uh, us to travel because in one week we can meet global CEOs, global leaders, rather than travel from London to France to New York. Uh, that can also save quite a lot. Uh, so these are the measures we put in place to encourage our customers mm -hmm. uh, to be a responsible travelers. I want to talk more about customers in, in a minute, but before that, I'm curious, you know, you work with multiple partners, mm -hmm. so many different airlines, mm -hmm. hotels. Mm -hmm. Is there a criteria? Does a hotel have to meet a certain green standard or an airline a certain standard before they can list mm. on your platform? Yeah, different travel organizations already published uh, their criteria. Uh, so, for example, uh, we uh, for WTTC World Tourism and Travel Organization, uh, they also publish you know the green criteria. Pretty much uh, similar. Uh, we uh, pretty much embedded our three R's into uh, these criteria. So let's talk about um, customers, and I want to bring you all in here. I'm just curious, you know, what is the first thing you look at when you decide uh, to buy a plane ticket? So just very informally, raise your hands if it's price. Really, two people? Okay, okay, we're getting a few more. Is it, you know, the duration, whether you're flying direct or via via? Oh, That's more for that. Yeah, because That's this is a business group, high-end customers. 
That's that is true. <laughs> How about destination? How many customers, you know, decide their vacation based on their destination? Okay, yeah. Okay, how many of you look at the carbon footprint of your journey and make that a deciding factor? It's a, okay, so Jane, that's what we need to change, right? Right. Yeah, so a very typical uh, pool is that with this forum, I expect direct mm -hmm. flights uh, will be the majority of the choices. Uh, if you go to university, on the other hand, mm -hmm. price is the first priority because of the different status. When I was a student, you know, I would do multiple stops in order to get some savings. That's kind of normal. Uh, so basically, depending on your economic status and also uh, the value of your time, uh, different customers will have different uh, perspective. Uh, but what we are hoping for is that when you are travel, you can also do everything you can uh, to conserve energy, conserve uh, resources, and for our customer, we give them loyalty points. Yeah. If they donate these loyalty points, we'll double that mm -hmm. and make sure we buy credits to offset carbon footprint. You know, when you're searching um, on a platform for a holiday or a business trip or whatever, there are filters, right? And you can choose your filters. You can search sure. according to the time of day you want to right. travel, uh, cheapest to highest, highest right. to cheap, right. lowest fare. When are we going to see a time when, you know, carbon footprint is the f is an option that you can choose. You don't we see do. it on many options. We do. We, uh, when you select uh, trip uh, products uh, for flight, you have a, a selection, a sorting criteria for carbon emission. And you can select flights according, according to that. According to that. Yeah. Well, we have to all start, we need a shift in our mindset, yeah. right, for that. Um, how has the pandemic changed a consumer's view on travel? Do you think the fact that we were all forced to slow down is changing the way consumers are thinking about mm. travel, or is really is ecotourism is something that we're just not ready for yet? Mm. I think we have seen uh, the trends we call four S's. Uh, the first S is safety driven. Uh, more and more customers really want to be very well protected when they are traveling. So we are working with our airline partners, hotel partners, to make sure they put in safety measures to protect our customers when they come abroad. The second one is smaller group. Uh, so consumers, rather than get on the bus with 50 people, sometimes they prefer to travel with their uh, uh, families and close friends. The third one is short booking window because they don't mm -hmm. know what's going on, when is the outbreak. So they choose to do a short booking window. And last one is very encouraging. Our young travelers uh, is very sustainable driven. Uh, so they want to travel uh, to places that is uh, very with uh, sustainable products. Uh, that is why we're building our product and consumers can select based on the sustainability. Now, sustainability is one issue, but for a business to be responsible, mm -hmm. there are many other ways you can create sort of that uh, responsible roadmap. Mm -hmm. And I know for you personally, getting more women into the workforce is really, really important. Right. Give us some numbers. Tell us exactly what the makeup of your workforce is now, oh, men, true. women. Sure. Um, we do quite a lot uh, to empower the female leadership. Uh, when a female is pregnant, we offer free taxi to bring her to work and bring her to home after work. When the baby is born, we give them 800 as a welcome gift, 3,000 as education fee. Uh, when they come back to work, we build very nice nursing <coughs> rooms uh, and offer flexible working hours for them. And still, that's not enough. Uh, we realize that for many outstanding uh, female students, when they got their PhD, normally they are at the age of 27 or 28. And doctors will classify any pregnancy after age 35 as a high-risk pregnancy. So between 28 to 35, you only have seven years to build a career, build a family, and have a children, have a kid. And that's very short, right? So we continuously think about the ways to alleviate uh, pressure for females. So what we offer right now is if our female workers wants to use um, high technology to have their eggs frozen, we will pay for it. 
and that's very progressive. Uh, as a result, more than 50% of the females, uh, more, more than 50% of the workforce are females, and more than 40% of the middle managers are females, and more than one third of the executives are females. And that number is outstanding, particularly in the high tech industry. So I still think we can do more. I mean, those numbers are hugely impressive, and those policies which target women specifically, it goes a long way, I think, in retaining women, right? Correct. Because very often the issue is not bringing women into the workforce, it's preventing them from leaving, leaving. Right. the whole leaky pipeline right. issue. Right. right. Yeah, so I think it's very important uh, to have female leadership at senior level, at board level. Uh, to give you an example, one time uh, when we have our quarterly offsite meeting, uh, we always go somewhere uh, that's far away from your normal working environment. And one time I realized one of the uh, person just had a baby, and I had two children as a, a working mother, so I went to her and I offered, you can bring your baby and you can bring a nanny with you. Uh, during the meeting break, feel free to go to the room and nurse your baby and come back. Uh, feel free to do so. And she was very appreciative uh, because uh, I know as a working mother, if you stop breastfeeding your baby for one day, your milk will disappear. Mm -hmm. And it's a very small thing to do, but it's so significant for their family. Uh, so his, her family, her uh, her uh, is uh, very grateful uh, for what we did for the family. And I think uh, very few employees will have courage to come to a CEO and ask if I can bring a baby with me to the business meet, uh, trip. But if you have a working mother at the executive level or board level, it's a very small thing to do, yet it brings such a good uh, gratitude from your workforce. Oh, absolutely. Just a reminder to everyone to send in your questions. I do have the iPad here where I can see your questions coming in, so please go ahead and uh, use the app that you have. I want to go uh, back to one thing we touched upon, which is uh, local communities. Mm -hmm. That's another part that you've been very focused on in another way. Another, I know it's another sort of stop on your roadmap mm -hmm. to create a responsible business. Sure. So over the last three years, when international travel didn't happen from China, Tell us about how you looked inward mm -hmm. and your work with local communities. Sure. Um, so we realized that there are many beautiful places in a remote area, which is very backwards. Our high-end customers want to go there to visit, yet there is no good hotels. Uh, and uh, instead of uh, having uh, the female workers leave their uh, hometown, leave their children behind, come to metropolitans to make a living, uh, we thought about a way uh, uh, that we build very good resorts, trip.com resorts, in the very remote area. We hire local people, local women, mm -hmm. and they are engaged to make meals, make tea, uh, make handcrafts, uh, educating the city kids. Uh, we ask the city kids to bring 10 books. When they go to this remote area, they read with the farmers' kids, make, make meals uh, with the mothers in the countryside. Uh, they, the salary will pay these local employees much higher than local level. They're making a much better living uh, by by uh, working with us. And uh, the children from the coastal area, wealthy area, learn so much about farming, about the poverty in the countryside, and they can uh, feel very much engaged. Uh, with the local community. And uh, we also uh, encourage our uh, uh, travelers, uh, if they have a chance, they can also invite the kids from remote area to go to Shanghai, Beijing, and for them to see a different side of the world. So and we've talked about you know, uh, being greener, about supporting women, about supporting local communities. Mm -hmm. What, according to you, defines a responsible travel company? What makes a travel platform responsible? Mm. Uh, travel is very essential uh, for our daily uh, work uh, because travel brings about 10% of the 
uh, global uh, job opportunities as well as GDP. So stop travel, stop traveling is not a solution for ESG because you may address the E, but you're not responsible for S, right? So we need to take a very good view uh, to make sure we address all the issues. Um, so when we uh, bring people to the world, we are hoping, particularly during this challenging time uh, where we have a, a you know, lots of uh, challenges around the world. Our mission is while we are uh, sending people further away, we are bringing the world closer. Uh, travel is one of the channels that uh, we can use to really enhance the understanding from different nations, different race, different religions, and promote global peace. So for me, uh, using travel to bring people together, uh, build a community with the commitment mm -hmm. uh, in net zero, uh, with a commitment to promote global peace is the responsible way for travel platform. You mentioned ESG, and this is something that's, uh, it's a topic that's already started coming up here in Davos quite a bit. It's become a little bit controversial now because there is backlash against ESG and especially the financial services industry. I'm just wondering uh, what your view is about the use of the term ESG within the travel industry. How does that sit with you? Mm. ESG is very balanced uh, because it's not only environment. We also t talk about S, social responsibility and governance, right? So when we make our commitment, we need to look at a comprehensive solution, not only one solution. Uh, so as a company, as a community, uh, we are very committed to the ESG. You released your inaugural Sustainable Travel Consumer Report in 2022, and that showed that travelers do want to travel sustainably. Right. What surprised you, if anything, what surprised you about your inaugural Sustainable Travel Consumer Report? Uh, what uh, really pleased me is to see how new generation are committed to ESG. Uh, so if you look at our uh, children, uh, their generation, uh, they talk to me consistently. Uh, they said, you know, your generation or generation before us created the problem. Hmm. We need to solve this together. So they are very committed. I'm very pleased to see that. Uh, so I see the hope uh, from our future generation. We owe them a duty uh, to solve the issue with them. What are some of the challenges that you worry about when you think about, you know, you want to fill the next generation with hope, you want to create a greener environment, uh, a greener travel industry for them. Mm. What's, what's the main stumbling block? Mm. What do you I think, think is um, we need to uh, not only conserve energy uh, and do everything we can with our understanding, we also need to invest in major technology breakthrough. I was very encouraged. You got the right people here. Yeah. <laughs> we, I was very encouraged to see Lawrence Livermore uh, results on the nuclear energy uh, had a major breakthrough. It's, right now, it's only at the lab level. It probably will bring forward um, 10 years, reduce our carbon um, emission uh, mm. goal 10 years if it works in a scalable manner. So as organization, if we can commit more uh, dollar amount for technology breakthrough, I think that's coupling with our efforts uh, based on the current knowledge that might uh, move our steps much further. And we're at the start of 2023. What is sort of a short-term goal for you? Mm. Uh, what do you hope that the travel industry can achieve in the very short term? Say in 2023, what could happen, should happen, that fills you with hope? Mm. 2023 is going to be a year for revival. Uh, so we are very hopeful. Uh, look at the people who come here. Everyone has a very strong mission, uh, not only do well, uh, but also do good. Uh, so we are hoping that during the first half of the year, the global travel industry uh, can rebuild its capacity uh, to the normal level. And then the second half will be back to normal. I hope so too. Jane Sun, thank you so much for being here. Lovely to see you outside of China over thank here. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and for having me. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much.